So, hi and welcome to From Zero to Package by the end of this talk. And <clears throat> I want to show you how you can create an NPM package with the help of, of Svelkit. Svelkit is the application framework on top of Svelte. It's the official application framework and can be used to or it helps with bigger applications because it supports code splitting. It has a file based routing system and for server side rendering and also some other uh, useful tools. And I recently also found out that it also can be used to create uh, NPM packages. And that's what I'm going to show you today. And I'm now we're about to share your screen for the presentation. Full screen, right? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Ivan. I'm a senior software engineer at Ethereum and we write a custom software for our customers. And in a few months, we also use Svelte and Svelkit in some of our projects. And in one of those projects, I had to solve a problem recently. And we have some light and dark backgrounds, and we wanted that all of our components react to or depending on if it's when if they are rendered on a light or a dark background, the component use the better looking uh, variant of it. So if you have a dark background, we want the component to render the light version and also the other way around and without telling the component itself that it should render the light variant. So everything gets automatically detected. And Implementation took some time. It was not so easy. That's the initial thought. We came across uh, some edge cases, and and yeah, when we were done in, and confident with the implementation, I thought that this project could be uh, could be good to share to others because maybe they also other struggles struggled and. So I decided to share the implementation and the easiest way to share something in the JavaScript ecosystem is to create an NPM package. And I googled a bit and then I saw that Svelkit provides a way to do that quite easily. And now I can, I will share you, show you um, how we can do that. For this example, we let's say we want to create a component library with some components that we want to use throughout all, all of our uh, all of our applications. To get started with a new Svelkit project, we can uh, initialize it with the npm command, and I will name it. Vienna. Demo. And this command uh, will go through some steps. And we can choose between a demo application or a skeleton project. We choose an empty project. Um, for the people who know me, uh, I can't <laughs> do anything without TypeScript, so I will also choose TypeScript here. <laughs> and uh, for linting, formatting, and testing, we say no for now, but in a <laughs> real world application, you should probably also say yes to all of those <laughs> options. Then let's cd into the project, into this project. All dependencies. And for a 
component library, you probably also want to share some or they or all of the components should have the same look and feel. So you probably want to create uh, some variables for those files uh, for those uh, colors and fonts. Uh, let's start with that. We create a new width folder. And in here we create a larger.stss file. Uh, we also need to install install SAS. And note. Take advantage of SAS in the cycle project. And let's create our first variable. Name it my color. Give it <coughs> it to tomato, which is a real color. You haven't seen it before. Uh, because we initialized the project with uh, TypeScript, the slide preprocess package was already configured for us. And that itself only uh, knows JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And it provides that preprocess package that also adds support for other language variants like uh, TypeScript and also STSS or less post CSS. And without me needing to configure it, it's just adding this line, which was already done by the setup process. So when we have our color variable, we can use it in our first component, create a button, that's start file. And let's use the variable. To style the button, and we need to tell uh, the preprocessor that we want to use STSS on that style attribute, or else it will just use the usual CSS. Uh, let's import the variable. Background cover our button. My color. Let's try to render this button. Sometimes the auto import gets it wrong and we do manually. Oh. Is it configured or the it should be yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. No, I don't no. think so. It was changed in a recent version. <laughs> <laughs> we should create a PR for <laughs> And if you now run the F server, we see I forgot to render this slot here. You see the button rendered here. Looks like the red. Best color ever. And yeah, but if we uh, if you want to create a component library, you probably don't just want to style the button. We also want to add some complexity to it. So we will add something to the script section, and let's export 
a new variable, and we call it loading. I know what's the same. I know And we can set a default value to the variable. So we don't have to set it on each component instance here. But a button usually also has could have some other props, for example, uh, type attribute. But we got an error here because we haven't defined it on the uh, on the component props, but you usually don't want to uh, write each or define each property for for that button. Luckily, Slack it also provides a way to uh, so we don't have to specify them all. We can use the dollar dollar rest props feature. And once we save the file, we won't get an error here because this file tooling sees that we use that rest props feature and opens the button up for all properties. But now it also accepts that's everything, but that's probably not what we want. We can fix it again and add type safety by defining the special dollar dollar box type here. We set it to a partial of a button element. Each uh, HTML element has an interface defined uh, where all the properties are defined. And with partial, we say that we or we mark all of those properties as optional. Now we also need to add the properties that we manually have defined here on this, to this object. It's a bit redundant and ugly for now, um, but I think this will change in a future version. And now we have a custom button component with our loading flag and also um, we get code completion. The code completion and also type safety. We can't set a number in this type here. So uh, the, we are not just uh, restricted to components. We can also export some functionality and or actions. An uh, action as well can be used to enhance any uh, HTML dollar element with custom functionality. And we can do that right now. Let's create a New TypeScript file, and we define a new, or we export a new uh, action here. We <laughs> give it the type action. Uh, we need to import it from start. And 
Mm -hmm. You can specify uh, generic parameters here. The first one is the type of node we want this action to be used on. For now, let's say we want to use it on a paragraph element. And as a second argument, we say it's a number. This action uh, should be applied on a paragraph and by defining a number, we say the amount of num of characters that this paragraph should show. So everything else gets um, truncated. Thank you. And so we set a maximum of amount of, of characters we want to show. Our first parameter is the node, the second is the length. Let's check for the content length. And if bigger, then our length will pass in. It's a default value. We set or we uh, use a substring here. Just at the end. You can now use it on a paragraph. With the use keyword. Actually, inside of here, then we call it for. Okay. Okay. And if we now. Uh, and we now see that it's created, and we also can uh, define the amount of characters we want to display. So let's say we now have our compete with our um, <clears throat> component library, and we want to share it. We then can just run the package command that comes with each Stipit project. And when you first run the command, you will get an error. Because. Because Valkit wants to provide a good developer experience and says that or it will all automatically generate TypeScript definition files even if you uh, aren't using it in your, in your component library. So it will try to automatically infer what you want, uh, what are the properties, and it creates the corresponding uh, types of definition files. So it, it delivers a better developer experience for the consumer of the component library. And we can disable it or we just install it. And to the sex package and we run the command again. Now we should see we should see our files inside this generated package folder. If we take a look at our button component. We see that it doesn't contain TypeScript anymore, and also our STSS file gets compiled, and we see our variable inland here. 
the reason behind that is that this backhatch then can be used by any other project, even if they haven't set up TypeScript or SGSS. And it's open up, it's it opens up the uh, It's not restricting the user to have a certain setup of the project. And also the TypeScript file we see is now a normal JavaScript file with the corresponding TypeScript declarations. And also we see it here for the button component. Everything else that's inside this lib folder just gets copied over. The README file gets copied over from the main package and a new package JSON file gets generated with all the exports defined that we need. So we don't really have to do anything. We just created some files in this lib folder. And now we can go into this package and into this folder and publish it to NPM. I have already done that and I will show you how we now can use it. Uh, let's create a new project with the command we used before. It's but then we name it. We once again get asked what we want to use. We want to start a new skeleton project. For this time, we choose. We not. We are not choosing TypeScript. <laughs> it's okay. It's a, we are using JavaScript with the JS doc commands. It offers the same type safety features, but with some additional overhead in writing those commands. I can go into this demo. Start up this code. I will install. Dependencies and also install the package we just had released. We wait for the npm install to complete. And we now have the component library installed and we can use it here if the auto modifier doesn't it's manually imported just that button then it should import no it no. doesn't touch all the inside of the script Game back button, I don't know where this comes from. Backcratch demo. And we can use. Let's start the F server. And we see our custom button. <laughs> and like I said, we are not using TypeScript here. We don't have SCSS installed. It just works. Out of the box, and we also get code completion and strong type safety support out of the box because the button was created with TypeScript. Yeah, that's it. I hope I could give you a quick overview how to create a component library and publish it to npm and you can find examples on this on my github page 
It's inside this Vienna meter package demo repository. Any questions? <laughs> this building actually did, did, did this come with the uh, with Svelkit? With Svelkit, yeah. It's yeah, it's a beta version, but it works quite well. If you later decide to uh, use some custom or advanced. Functionality from site itself, for example, the source or context, then the consumer of the package has to add two configs to their B config because the context needs to get bundled into the real application. So, like if we would have store like a well store, so yeah. set and get functionality. Yeah. And this would work without uh, those two additional lines of config. But you then have two, two times the, the store functionality in your application. One time from your component and the second time from your application. But in theory, you could like create a package that's like that. This can create a package that's not going to be used in Svelte, but just like. It, yeah, you can create anything you want. It doesn't. Really have to be consumed by a side application. Except for straight files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actions. Yeah, actions. Actions can be used on other elements. So, so in theory, we can make an action which is kind of exporting the store from Snow mm -hmm. and use it. Yeah, I don't know. Or the, an example that I did was to have a persistent store which uh, maps itself onto uh, local storage. So you like when you reload the page, it's still there. And that should also work outside of the Svelte mm -hmm. context because you just need Start to use the set and uh, subscribe functions. It's part of the packages. Yeah. Packages, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, for, for folks who don't, because you don't use Svelte, but like there is also Svelte and Svelte Kit. The spell kit kind of gives more of a functionality by kind of comparing similar to Next.js. Also have server server bundle and routing and some tools. Okay. 